what's up my precarious little pluots? This is Rob from A Gay Guy Plays and today on The Daily Grind we're going to be doing something a little bit different and that's mainly because of the fact that I've noticed a recurring narrative that has been spread throughout the YouTube Warframe comment sections. Andres Reaper says, at this point I am more interested in watching your videos than actually playing the game. Cicadia says, I haven't played Warframe in months and I'm still watching videos on it. Artie Gun slides on in with that feeling when you realize you have more fun watching content creators do their thing than you do playing the game. Now, that doesn't sound good and I have a couple sayings that go along with it. When you're making memes about the game is more interesting than your game, you might have a problem with your game. When the drama behind your Steam score is more interesting than your game, you might have a problem with your game. When the fashion inside of your game is more interesting than the gameplay itself, you might have a problem with your game. So today, as you can probably tell, we're going to be covering some subjects that are Warframe related, but aren't actually in game. So first things first, we're going to be talking about the Steam review bombing as well as a cute little article by Polygon called Warframe delivers the absolute best in video game Dolly dress up and why these two things actually matter more than they seem. So let's go ahead and start off with the Steam review bombing. Now, I'm actually going to go ahead and toss a link down in the description box below to Mogamu's video about this, as well as one up there if I can manage to make it happen. Listen, I'm still inept when it comes to internet technologies. Um, but basically what it boils down to is uh, a lot of people have kind of been dismissing the Steam Critic review bombing thing that's going on because, you know, uh, China is currently in a place of upheaval. So for those of you who are unaware, there are a lot of very, very angry Chinese players out there. And a lot of people are saying, listen, your politics is all fucked up. That's all that it has to do with. You're just bitter about, um, I believe there's something that has to do with the different regions and what regions belong to what. I'm not going to get into it because uh, I'm not trying to have them come for me. They're going to revoke my Asian card. And listen, I'm trying to hold tight to that. I like being a little exotic. <laughs> Regardless, um, there are some long-term issues that have actually been underlying and they've been kind of this powder keg that's been waiting to explode and I feel like the politics that's currently gone over there has just set everything alight. In addition to that, they let go of somebody who's actually been helping with one of the big topics, which is localization. And I guess it had to do with him violating an NDA but before he even signed the NDA. And so there's all kinds of like he said, she said stuff going on there and I don't really want to touch that either. But I want to actually get into some of the nitty gritty that has been going on because a lot of people just want to brush this off and saying they're just being crazy. But really what it kind of comes down to is um, there are some really, really bad localization issues where it's kind of like, why don't you just get the language right? right? In addition to that, there are some pretty nasty server issues that's happening. And I actually think that's one of the biggest issues that Warframe definitely needs to address over there because people are having trouble logging in. And when you create a game that people can purchase things in, you want to make sure that the product that people are having the opportunity to purchase you because you're marketing all of these things that you can buy to them um, on this platform and you're not letting them access that because of these server issues and I saw some really dumb comments saying this is a peer-to-peer -peer game why are they worried about servers do your research there's the login server as well as the chat server there's a there's a lot of servers that happen on DE's end that has nothing to do with the gameplay in and of itself um, some people were even reporting really really low megabits per second on a six gigabyte update so they're like I'm sitting here for hours on end waiting for this game to update because you are not um, improving your servers. So really, they've got these other extra powder keg drama starting issues in addition to a long-standing issue with localization and a long-standing issue with poor service on their servers. So it just kind of gives you this idea that people have been mad for a while and then all of a sudden when the politics went off, when that one person on the localization team got booted, it was the spark that started the fire for Chinese players. And I know that a lot of people out there are probably going to feel a little bit distance from them because, you know, that is a completely different region from us. But at the end of the day, it's a group of people 
who feel like they've been ignored by DE and had long-standing issues that DE hasn't addressed. Now, I don't know if that sounds familiar to you, but as a veteran and a dedicated player, I definitely feel like I've been ignored by DE and had long-standing issues that haven't been addressed. So we're seeing consistencies and this picture of DE being someone who doesn't address their issues and doesn't listen to their players is kind of like being illustrated on a much larger and much more global tapestry. Now, when it comes down to this issue, one of the big things that I will say about this, and this is gonna sound really, really odd because it's gonna have to do with the makeup industry, now, when an Asian brand comes into the U.S. markets, they tend to not have a lot of different colored foundations. I'm, I'm trying not to lose you here, so I'm doing these hand motions. Hopefully, they will keep you drawn in. But foundations and concealers are very lacking in tone, so when these brands come to the U.S., what you'll actually find is that these brands expand um, the variation of colors that they have to be able to cater to the market because these brands are coming to the U.S., so they must adapt to the U.S. And we have to keep that in mind is China didn't come to Warframe. Warframe came to China. So because of the fact that Warframe is offering this product to Chinese players, they need to make sure that they're adapting to that market with good localization and good servers. Like these are potential paying customers and one will address the whole pay to win thing that they have going on over there in a second, but these are potential paying customers and you need to make sure to provide a good service to them. At the very, very least, good localization and good servers. You know, when it comes down to the whole region thing with the people arguing, that, listen, that's on you. Y'all Y'all gotta figure out a way to navigate that. But I'm gonna stop you right there because I know that there are some white knights that are gonna say, well, review bombing doesn't mean anything. These people leaving these reviews will not affect the game in a long term. And then, you know, they said the same thing about YouTubers leaving. Look at this chart. YouTubers leaving Warframe doesn't affect Warframe. I was like, it doesn't affect Warframe. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But what it does do is it, it paints a very good picture of the state of Warframe. And what we're seeing is these localization issues have been going on for a while. These server issues have been going on for a while. And then the straw that broke the camel's back, of course, was the firing of that guy from the localization team and all of the crazy politics that are going on over there. So basically, we're talking about a whole lineup of disappointments that have been going on for a while, then all of a sudden, one subject comes through, and all of a sudden, the powder keg explodes. And the thing about it is, this isn't the first time that we've seen this issue. We also saw it when it came down to the raids in Warframe, right? It was a big veteran thing. A lot of them absolutely loved that aspect of it. Then you got rid of raids, and then all of a sudden the veterans were like, nah, we're gone. And we have to look at it as not a singular issue because it's not just raids. It's the content drought. It's the lack of endgame. It's all of this just compiled into a powder keg, and the spark that lit it was the, you know, relinquishment of raids and them not developing that specific end of the spectrum anymore. And I think that as of late, a lot of Warframe players have been disappointed with Warframe's content. So we're seeing this big old disappointment bomb that's being built one, one step at a time. So the question is, what is going to be the spark that causes your keg to blow? And say that I've had enough. This is the last straw on the camel's back that is like cracking that poor little animal in half. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm very close to hitting that breaking point. I like, I'm really, really close. There are some things that I know internally that of course I respect my NDAs, so I make sure not to say too much, but I'm upset for lack of a better term. So for me, it's just like, it's, it's just like a whole lineup. I mean, a lot of people from the outside, when they look at my content, they'll look at singular pieces like, why is he so mad about login 2.0? Or, oh my God, why is he still flipping out about Roomba Wing? Or really, is this Loki skin such a big deal? And what it kind of boils down to is, yeah, maybe the Loki skin isn't the biggest deal, but it's not just the Loki skin. It's the fact that they still have revives in arbitration. Instead of fixing host migration issues, they still leave that really shitty mechanic in there. 
In addition to that, when they launched Kuva Disruption, they didn't put the right amounts in or any worthwhile rewards. So no, it's not just the Loki skin, it's all of these lineups of disappointments that have come before, and as a veteran, yo, you have to understand, I got a lot of disappointments. So when you see me flip out about, you know, Focus 2.0, it's not just that. It's lack of endgame from all the lineup to Focus 2.0. It's all the things that happened in Login 1.0. It's everything that's been compiled and I'm this big little happy powder keg dancing around saying, please don't light my spark on fire. I'm going to try to keep the wick from you. I'm trying to stay alive. Uh, but instead we get constant shit like the Loki skin and I'm like, oh, you getting awfully close with that match, boo. And you know what? I'm tired of dancing around. You might as well light that wick and wick your gut. Um, so for me, I feel like a lot of the veteran and dedicated communities are at their breaking point. And I think that this is a very interesting picture that we're seeing because we're getting this picture from a lot more angles than just our own. DE, as of late, has not been listening to their players, at least from what we've seen. Like, they still have a couple releases that I think a lot of us are crossing our fingers for go well. Um, but it just shows that all it takes is one fuck up. And all of a sudden, a whole community will turn their back on you. And this is where we get into some of the deeper shit. Um, because you already, you've already lost a lot of the veteran leg on your table, right? You might, if you don't get the localization stuff fixed and the server stuff fixed on the Chinese end, you might lose another leg to your table. So the issue is exactly how many legs do you have left to stand on, right? And for those of you guys who don't think that this is a big deal, you do have to understand that, number one, China has a lot of money, has a lot of the world's money. Um, and they also have a cultural um, approach to video games, because a lot of the Asian, re Asian regions do, that everything is pay to win. So they're not as hesitant to pay for things right? They're not as hesitant to pay for prime accesses. They're not as hesitant to um, pay for platinum. They're not as hesitant to do all of that. So if you piss off the Chinese market, that's a paycheck. And all of these white knights are running around saying, oh, who cares about them? Just put them in their own place. We don't need them. They need to, they need to, what do you call this? They need to learn how to speak English, all of this bull crap. But here's one thing. Listen, all of your white knighting is not paying DE's bills. These Chinese people might be. So telling them to go away is like telling DE to lose a part of their funding, which is mistaken on your part. You have to realize that legit, all of you know your likes on Twitter, all of your little, you know, follows on Instagram, all of the time you spend, you know, talking to like other players in game and playing your little guitar, that doesn't pay their bills. What pays their bills is money. And the Chinese market has a good amount of money. So we don't want them to lose that leg. They're already basically lost the money from the veterans. They might lose the money from the Chinese players. So all they have to go left over is just the revolving door of new players. And that can be fair weather if they're not putting in um, good content into the game. So I'm just saying, and remember, those new players end up turning into veterans. So what happens when those new players are like, oh, well, there's nothing left for me here. I'll go play Borderlands 3. I'm just saying. And that's why I'm saying that this review bombing is a much bigger issue than we realize. And it paints a very, very interesting picture of the current situation that we've got with Warframe. So I'm very curious to see how you guys feel about all of this. Are you guys also feeling that your little powder keg is being filled and you're just kind of dancing around, dodging the flames right now? Uh, toss that in the comment section below. In addition to that, um, I also want to know if you guys share the same sentiment to some of the people above where they're like, listen, I watch a lot of Warframe YouTube videos, but I don't actually play the game that much. Um, toss that down there as well. Now, I actually wanted to end this on a kind of cutesy note, but kind of not so cutesy note. There was a Polygon article written about um, Dolly dress up in Warframe, and this article focused heavily on all of the great customizations that you can have on Warframe. And I think it's fantastic. Warframe does offer a whole lot of customization. However, we're at a little bit of a breaking point. See, I've also seen a couple comments um, lately that I've been surprised on my stance about a lot of things, but 
I don't think that people understand the term dolly dress up is not a great term for Warframe. Now, I coined the phrase dress to kill or coined the series dress to kill um, mainly because of the fact that that's exactly what I like to do. I like to get dressed to kill, underline on kill. So now we're seeing things like fashion frame and dolly dress up, Barbie frame, all of that kind of stuff. And that has a really shitty implication to it. Because what we're finding a lot lately is there's a lot of customization happening. There's a lot of getting pretty and then taking selfies, but never really going anywhere or doing anything. So for me, I want to distance myself from that because, bitch, I get dressed to kill and I go into video game modes and I play those video game modes. I don't just sit on my ass in Captura strumming a goddamn guitar and trying to get the lighting just right so that I could go ahead and, you know, tweet out pictures of me in hopes that Warframe will retweet or like because let's be real, they haven't done that to any of my content in quite some time. Just saying, it's not like I haven't noticed. But that is one of the things that I kind of want to make the big distinction on. I get that fashion is fun. I get that fashion is uh, a great way to kind of like, you know, show off your, your insides to the world and your personality. But at the same time, let's never ever forget that at my core, at least, I don't want to speak for anybody else, I am dressed to kill. We're here to massacre in video games. And I'll tell you right now, there is no bigger BM there. And that's part of it, too. There's no bigger BM in a video game than absolutely stomping your enemies and looking fashionable while you do it. Uh, so that is my current stance on Dolly dress up. That's not me. I'm dressed to kill. So uh, let me know if you are dressed to kill as well down in the comments below. And that's going to wrap up for this video. Let me know if this is something that you guys enjoyed. Um, if you guys are curious again about any of the stuff that's going on, I invite you guys to go on over to Steam to take a look at the reviews yourself. In addition to that, make sure you are checking out Mogamu's videos. And that about does it for me for now. So as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. You gotta do the dodge the spark dance. Please do not light my powder keg. Waffle. <laughs> See you guys next time. Bye.